Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 tutorial video. In this episode, we are going to be taking a quick look at Sub-Zero, but more than taking a look at the actual character, uh, I'm going to kind of explain and show why everybody thinks this character is very high on the tier list. So think of this video as an extension of the Kotal Khan video that I put up, uh, I think two or three days ago. There we looked at a character who many people think is extremely underwhelming. Here we are looking at a character that a lot of people say is extremely good. And just kind of looking at what the differences are. And also looking at Sub-Zero's moveset because he's kind of unique in this game in terms of what he has available. Uh, it was something that was more common in MKX and he's pretty much the only one that retains it in MK11. So Sub-Zero, if you go into the Dead of Winter variation, which is the tournament variation. He has another one which is kind of like Zonerish, but most people think that this is the stronger one. And you look at his special moves, you might not think that this character is anything special. Ice Ball, negative 16 on block, you can amplify it to make it negative 15, so really no difference. And he has a charge move instead of slide, which is mid, and it's negative 20 on block and 22 amplified. So you might be looking at this and you're like, damn, this character doesn't seem that good at all. However, his tools go a little bit deeper than that. First of all, just looking at his combos, even though he doesn't have a lot, just running down the frames, you can see on the block advantage that aside from this, which is his big overhead string, everything is pretty much safe or very close to being safe. That's one of Sub-Zero's main advantages. He is an incredibly safe character. Now, to counter that, he does not have a mid that is that good. He has one really standout mid, this move. However, the problem with this move is that he does this little run, so that can be, you know, it can be interrupted while he's running. However, this thing is plus four on block. So again, he has some stuff, but you might be looking at this and wondering, damn, why does everybody say this character is ridiculous? Some people even say that he's broken and should be nerfed. Personally, I do not agree with that, but, you know, whatever. He has one tool that is very overpowered, but other than that, the character itself is fine. Anyways, what does he have? Well, MKX, if you guys played that, or if you didn't, used to be full of standing resets and 50-50s, true 50-50s. Let's just go over that. So a standing reset or any kind of reset is when you cut your combo short and you do a move and then you go into either a low attack or an overhead attack. That is of course a 50-50, having to guess between a low and an overhead. As you can probably tell just when I did them, Sub-Zero happens to have very fast lows and a fairly quick overhead, quicker than most of the cast. In Dead of Winter, he has something else going for him, which is his enhanced Ice Ball. Now, Sub-Zero can always combo off of the low string. He can always do this in any variation. However, only in this variation can he combo off of the overhead. If I do this, just the normal Ice Ball, you can see it doesn't hit. Enhanced Ice Ball hits. You can probably kind of start guessing what this character has going for him. He is a mix-up machine. Now to complement his mix-up tools, he has one final thing going for him. And again, we have to dig into the frame data a little bit here. And that move is his standing tool. Now standing tool in itself is nothing special. It's a high attack, you know, nothing particularly good in terms of frames. Except one thing, the hit advantage. It has 22 frames of hit advantage. That is extremely high. Just look at the other moves. Like, in general, okay, the this one is ridiculous because it's, la it's a launcher, so this one is different. But generally, you look at his frames and nothing really stands out as much, aside from his knockdown moves, which, you know, makes sense, as his standing too. That I know some people are not as familiar with... Uh, kind of frame data as other people. Hit advantage basically means how long the opponent stays in kind of a stunned state. How long the opponent cannot do anything. 
You can tell that when I do this to move to Noob Cybot, he stays stunned, he kind of staggers backwards for quite a long time. Ju it, hit advantage simply means that he is in that stunned state for 22 frames. Now, if you look at his overhead, the startup on this, how fast a move comes out that startup frames, is 19 frames. The startup on his back 3, his low, is 13 frames. You can kind of begin to do the math here. Essentially, this move, this standing 2, gives you enough hit advantage. <clears throat> the opponent stays locked in for enough time that he has to take a guess between whether you're going to do the overhead or whether you're going to do the low. Now, of course, MK11 has guessing. Any fighting game has guessing between overheads, throws, and lows. I did them the other way around, but never mind. Every fighting game has that. However, a lot of overheads and lows in this game are reactable. That means that you can kind of tell when the opponent is gonna do them and reaction block either standing or low. The other nature, the unreactable overheads, tend to be just simple knockdown attacks. You know, uh, if you look at any characters like Cetrion's 213, which has the little overhead rock, that attack leads into nothing, no combos, nothing. Sub-Zero is different. When the opponent is in this stun state, you have to take a simple 50-50 guess. That's why I'm saying that this is a true 50-50. You, you have a 50% chance of guessing correctly, and then if you guess wrong, you are eating another combo. So, in practice, what does this look like? Well, it'll look a little something like this. As you can see, the combined reset into the wrong guess, just imagine if the opponent guessed wrongly, took almost or even 50% of Noob Saibot's HP. Now again, as you can see, if I do just the reset portion, underwhelming damage. However, this reset combined with the damage from the second half of the combo is absolutely insane. This is insane damage. And you know, if you want to cut it a little short, you can just end in the normal slide. You will have a bit less damage, but it's completely okay. So, this is why people say that Sub-Zero is insane, because he has something that no other character in this game has, and something that NRS specifically said that they want to remove, which is you having to constantly guess between 50-50s and eating giant combos. That was basically the main gameplay kind of shtick of MKX. You did an overhead, you did a low, once again the other way around, uh, you did some type of launcher, massive combo into some type of reset situation like this, rinse and repeat. And again, Sub-Zero is the only character who retains it. Now, the question is, is he actually overpowered and does he deserve a nerf? Well, I think in certain aspects, yes, because he has something that no other character should have and something that is 90% likely to be intentional. I don't think they ever intended the kind of frames to work out this way. Probably somebody made Palm Strike have 22 frames of hit advantage. Nobody really kind of looked into the fact that this is 19 frame startup and this is 13, so it leads to a true 50-50. So the easiest thing to do would be to reduce the hit advantage on this. It still wouldn't fix the problems completely, uh, the main reason for that is, is because, holy shit, yeah, like for example this, like even his straight punch and some of his other moves, I think his kick as well, uh, has good, good hit advantage, maybe not enough for an actual guess, but good amounts of hit advantage. You could also do something like increase the startup of his overhead, you increase it by three more frames and it technically becomes reactable. The only reason I'm saying this, and I'm saying that this character probably does need nerfing, is because he has other things going for him as well. Even naturally, without the reset, 
This character deals good damage. He has other things going for him, his insane mobility. Now, this enhanced ice ball, it eats projectiles. So if I go practice option and we go full screen, if we go yes, we go full screen, and I have Noob Cybot record a projectile. As you can see, it goes through his projectile. Yeah, so he pretty much, if he hits you with this move, the enhanced ice ball, he can get a combo from anywhere. Now, aside from that, Sub-Zero also has great whiff punishing with this move. He also has this move going for him. Uh, it leads to meterless damage on his combos. So, again, he, this character already has a lot going for him. And this reset is clearly some unintended extra. It's very obvious to tell that NRS were very careful about not including things like these types of resets and Sub-Zero has it probably again by accident. Now even if this reset was nerfed, this would still be a very strong character because you would still have to guess between the overhead and low. The only difference would be is that this character would become uh, a lot more unsafe because when your opponent is guessing as well, you are guessing as well. It's just that this hit gives the unintended consequence of you, uh, well, having a 50-50 chance of guessing right. I don't know, man. I don't balance these games. Maybe it's something that they're gonna keep. Probably not. I don't see them keeping it, but hey, this character is fun to play. He's very simple, you know very good to learn the basics of the game even more so than scorpion i think so yeah that's sub-zero man just kind of looking at what this character has you know you can tell why somebody like this uh shines over a character like kodal you know and i would be okay if some of the weaker characters had stuff like this you know i'm not against guessing or like removing guessing completely uh but, you know, give it to someone who doesn't have this many tools already going for them, maybe. Yeah, that's Sub-Zero, man. He's always been good, right? I think he's been pretty much good in every MK game. Uh, maybe in MK9 he wasn't too good, but in X he was for sure. Anyways, still a fun character. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to give it a like if you did. What do you think about this character? Do you guys play him? Do you want to see him nerfed into the ground or is he okay as he is? Yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.